Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, April 26, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, breaking news of an unholy alliance between the Mexican drug cartels and ISIS as Islamic terrorists stationed in Mexico cross into the United States to explore American targets. Then, a formerly transgendered woman exposes the leftist trans agenda. Up to 94% of children who at a young age identify as transgender, if we leave them alone and don't push or advocate for them to change genders, we'll actually grow out of their gender dysphoria. Meanwhile, social justice warriors in Austin vote to ban travel to states opposed to transgender bathrooms. All that plus live coverage and analysis of the presidential primaries. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you all for joining us tonight for this extended coverage. Myself, Joe Biggs, and the rest of the crew are going to be here giving you our analysis of this rigged primary, the presidential season we've got going on. Joe, what do you think about that? I mean, well, how, I do, you, how be do you win without even votes? It, well, it's going to be interesting, <laughs> you know, and a lot of these states that are coming up are large union areas. And, uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of these union workers, and they're actually being contacted via phone. Uh, text messages from their workers, from their administrators saying, hey, don't forget to go out and vote for Hillary. But these guys don't like Hillary. They've seen what NAFTA's done. They've seen all these different uh, trade things that they just don't like. And they're most of these people that I've talked to are all in for Trump. A anytime I put something out, hey, are you a union worker? Are you going to go Hillary or Trump? Everyone that I've talked to said Trump. So I think this uh, whole aspect of the whole thing is really going to make a big difference in these uh, elections coming up. Mm. Well, I mean, if they were so certain that Hillary's going to win, why do you think they're trying to force their union members to get out the vote. It'll be very interesting, but that's the kind of analysis we're gonna be giving you on our show. Of course, you won't be hearing that on any of the lamestream media outlets out there. Now, let's get to some of these stories. And the news uh, really kind of opening up everyone's eyes to the wide ranging criminal cartel activity that's actually going on in the US. It seems to have spilled over. They always kind of put this uh, idea out there that it, there's this invisible wall there at the border that keeps the cartels out. Meanwhile, we know that they're coming across the porous border. Of course, letting children in up to the age of 30, even though they're covered in gang tattoos. Now there's a Texas murder trial that's gonna shed some light on the Mexican drug cartels taking place here in the US. Two of three men who were involved in the assassination of a 43 year old Mexican lawyer in 2013 are going to be uh, standing trial. Now, the man who was killed was allegedly a prominent member of Mexico's Gulf Cartel, uh, the drug trafficking organization, and this is according to US officials. So normally, you don't have these high-ranking cartel members here in the US, but it's, it seems like they are beginning to move here as the, the cartel activity gets more violent in Mexico. And of course, everyone has heard of the uh, eight family members who were slain in Ohio, and they did find a huge huge, sophisticated um, marijuana growing operation there on some of the, uh, in some of the homes. And so the police are thinking that perhaps there was a turf war because they also found some marijuana fields uh, that looked to be um, Mexican nationals in charge of them. So very interesting uh, stuff that's going on, but that's not it. Now coming out of Judicial Watch, they're actually, I know you covered this last year in depth, um, cartels help terrorists in Mexico get to the US to explore their targets. Well, one of the interesting things like you were saying is how these guys are spilling over into the US. High ranking officials who actually live in Juarez and Ciudad live in El Paso to avoid all of that stuff and then drive back over into Juarez daily to perform their duties, but they will not trust that area to stay there, their families, anything like that, right? because it's getting so bad. Yeah, they wanna be protected by our laws, but. But you know, Josh Owens and I went there April 15th of last year, so it's been just a little over a year. And uh, we went down there to investigate the Judicial Watch report that initially came out saying that they had information from some high ranking Homeland Security officials who actually had information about ISIS operating in a small city just west of Juarez called Anapra. And uh, Josh and I went down there, we investigated. I even got a local to drive me into Anapra and investigate these uh, claims by Judicial Watch. And what I found were uh, mosques, different things like that. That's a very, you know, mainly Catholic region. 
You know, right. so it's a little weird for something like that there. And I remember one of the guys that really stuck out in my mind, we said, hey man, have you seen any Muslims, any kind of ISIS activity? Just throwing it out there, you know? Some, someone could go yes, could say no. The guy said, if I knew of anything like that, I wouldn't tell you, mm -hmm. you know? And he was saying that in Spanish. I had a guy with me translating, but uh, it's interesting. Here we are a little over a year later, and we have these reports that ISIS is there, and now we've done nothing about it. Obama administration has literally tied these border patrol agents' hands behind their back. They're not able to perform their job. Record numbers of people are coming across the borders on a daily basis, and they're not all children. They're not little women. They're people of you know Arabic descent, people from all over, right, places that want to hurt us. Prayer rugs. And so now this information was forwarded to Judicial Watch mm -hmm. by a high-ranking Homeland Security official in a border state. So this is not, I mean, Judicial Watch does some amazing uh, investigation there and they had this forwarded to them. So this isn't just some random conspiracy theory. This is a Homeland Security official who clearly is very concerned about yeah. this and the fact that no one's allowed to report on it except you'll see Breitbart's doing some excellent border reporting, but that's it because the agenda is we've got to have these open borders, there's no problem. Yeah, well it's interesting, uh, an Italian newspaper wrote an article and they actually had a chance to uh, get some comments from this guy that we're about to talk about. His name is Omar Mahmoud. He's a 52-year-old uh, Kuwaiti man who had been chased out of his country due to extremist uh, ideologies. And this is the quote that he actually gave the newspaper. Like, this guy was so cocky, and he goes, the border that separates Mexico from the U.S. is so full of free zones that I could come in with a group of men in a few hours and kill thousands of people in Texas and Arizona. And this is what we've been talking about since day one, that this is wide open. I've crossed into Mexico from Texas. I've done it from Arizona. Those are the two areas that have these large areas where there's no one there watching. And some of it's so like country and hilly that mm -hmm. you can't put up a fence and you don't have enough Border Patrol agents to even do anything about it. So this is a big threat. When this guy's coming out in a newspaper and making threats, he is uh, considered a mercenary of jihad. He's already been... Uh, uh, claimed to have trained uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, Pakistanis, Afghanis, and uh, Yemenis uh, uh, al-Qaeda fighters. Right. And now they're saying at this point in time that they believe that there's over a few hundred thousand that he has trained that are waiting to go out and carry a number of attacks out. So that that's, to me, that, that gives me goosebumps right. to know that they're allowing this to happen, the Obama administration, and they will not let our men and women on the border stop these people from coming in and carrying out another 9-11 style attack. Right, and they're eluding the border patrol. Uh, they're using remote farm roads, which you spoke to people there that have this property at, that were very concerned about this. They know they're coming through, so they are going through a rural town near El Paso. And these are Mexican drug cartels smuggling in Middle Eastern terrorists, of course, because if you've got the money, they'll do whatever. you. They don't care if you're a terrorist. I mean, it's with the enemy of my enemy, right? Well, where El Paso is on the west side, you have an area called Sunland Park. And just below Sunland Park, that's where my apartment used to be when I was stationed out there. When I looked out of my, uh, basically my front door to the right, I could see into an opera. Mm -hmm. It's right there on the other side of this right. one big fence that they have in that area. But there's still little small areas that you can get through and little caves and stuff that go through these areas that Josh Owens was able to really get good footage of. I mean, it's not that hard. I don't think that it's something that's, you know, uh, out of the question. You know, a lot of people say that because these guys are, you know, the cartels and the, the ISIS, they're not going to get along. But look, they both speak money. They both speak in blood. They, 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 they're both radical in their beliefs and what they do. It's very possible for these people to form an alliance, in a sense, to help each other out, to get money and to carry out things within the United States. Right, and Judicial Watch also uh, obtained evidence, reported on it earlier this year, that said that the, the U.S. government has known for more than a decade about the partnership between terrorists and Mexican drug cartels. State Department documents made public by Judicial Watch in January say that for at least 10 years, Arab extremists have entered the country through Mexico with the assistance of smuggling network cells. So is this like... Uh, Operation Fast and Furious, where they're allowing these people to trickle in so they can then track them, but then lose track of them, and then they end up in some border fight killing. Well, this ISIS Mexican people. cell is claimed to have gotten uh, small arms, munition, uh, devices for air targets directly from Iraqi arsenal of Saddam Hussein, and that's what they're going to be using and implementing in attacks here. Wow. So it's definitely a cause for concern. We need to do something. We need to speak out. We need to find out why. You know, people like Greg Abbott are actually coming out saying, hey, 
There's a yeah. problem. Why aren't you helping us? We need this help. And stop with the PC police when Trump says there is an issue. I've seen it myself. We have a president who hasn't even visited the border and keeps telling everyone to look away. There is no issue. Let's not forget that the ISIS suspect, uh, one of them that was captured, um, Omar from Minnesota, said that he planned to open up a route from Syria to the U.S. through Mexico. Mm -hmm. And he was telling ISIS terrorists about this route and how they could get through, which, of course, is through an, an opera. Well, stick around because coming up, I've got a compelling interview with a formerly transgendered woman. On Monday, the city of Austin's Human Rights Commission voted on a recommendation to ban all official travel and business with the states of Mississippi and North Carolina. North Carolina's HB2 restricts the use of bathrooms according to a person's biological sex and bars local governments from enacting non-discrimination laws. Mississippi's HB 1523 lays down different policies including preventing people from being forced Forced to take part in same-sex marriage ceremonies and letting businesses decide on rules on the use of restrooms, showers, dressing rooms, and locker rooms based on their religious beliefs. Two laws that have fueled the LGBT community to cry foul in the face of discrimination. Whereas the states of Mississippi and North Carolina have recently passed repressive anti-LGBT legislation and whereas these states, these state sanctioned LGBT discriminatory laws are inconsistent with this city of Austin policy, and whereas the city of Austin enacted a gender neutral bathroom ordinance, which went into effect in January 2015, and whereas the city of Austin has a history of boycotting governmental entities, which passed discriminatory laws, such as in 2010, when all travel and business was banned with the state of Arizona when they passed a horrendous Im immigration law, and whereas the city of Boston has an affirmative interest in making sure its employees are not subjected to unfounded detentions while on official city business. This working largely with uh, the LGBT and especially the transgender community, I recognize the um, the damage that is done just by having a bill like that exist. Commissioner Roy. All in favor, say aye. 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 So, the commission recommendation, the Human Rights Commission recommendation authored by Commissioners Brown and Bowles passes. And while all people, male, female, transgender, or otherwise, should enjoy the pursuit of happiness granted them in the free republic of the United States of America, it is abundantly clear to any parent and or female now facing what danger lurks behind the bathroom door as a result of this bullheaded approach to inclusion. A petition calling for a boycott on Target over the store's new bathroom policy promoting gender inclusivity has reached over a half a million signatures. Featured at the American Family Association website, the petition contends Target's new policy means a man can simply say he feels like a woman today and enter the women's restroom, even if young girls or women are already in there. Furthermore, the petition asserts Target's policy is exactly how sexual predators get access to their victims. The new bathroom policy also disproportionately endangers female bathroom users, according to the petition. Target is literally allowing child predators to target unsuspecting children and adult females in their bathrooms. Clearly. Target's dangerous new policy poses a danger to wives and daughters, the petition reads. We think many customers will agree, and we think the average Target customer is willing to pledge to boycott Target stores until it makes protecting women and children a priority. Izzy Abraham, a father, wrote, Basically, Target just told us, and millions of concerned parents, that we're no longer accepted, respected, and welcomed in their stores. Abraham continues, my friends, Target has crossed the line and I believe this is a test case. Others vented on Twitter under the hashtag boycott Target. Jordan Cook wrote, I wonder how safe women shopping at Target are going to feel when a man follows her and her small children to the bathroom. 
Breitbart broke down 25 reasons why Target's policy is a really bad idea, including these stories. Seattle Parks and Recreation is facing a first-of-a-kind challenge to gender bathroom rules. A man undressed in a women's locker room, citing a new state rule that allows people to choose a bathroom based on gender identity. A man dressed as a woman was arrested in Virginia on Monday after police say he was caught peeping into restroom stalls three times in the past year. A 33-year-old Palmdale man who allegedly dressed as a woman while secretly videotaping females using a department store bathroom was charged with several misdemeanor counts Tuesday, authorities said. A biological man claiming to be transgender so as to gain access to and prey on women at two Toronto shelters was jailed indefinitely last week after being declared declared by a judge a dangerous offender. A 24-year-old man was arrested Tuesday after a hidden cell phone was found recording video inside a Chapman University bathroom, police said. A man has been arrested after allegedly placing a hidden camera in a Starbucks bathroom in Brea and recording at least seven adults. Meanwhile, Child services are ramping up the arrests of parents for allowing their children to walk home from school or for simply playing in their backyard, as happened to a Canadian woman just a few days ago. This is nothing less than an attack on children by governments bursting with corruption. And by spending your money at Target, you are supporting a politically correct system hell-bent on crushing the family. Leftist bleeding heart liberal troll, before you mindlessly throw this report under the bus, let me be abundantly clear. The issue isn't transgenders using the bathroom. The issue is the fact that millions of women and children are now in danger as a result of this crusade for the 0.3% of the population, perhaps Politically correct corporations should simply supply a third bathroom. One for men, one for women, i.e. transgenders and the 400,000 plus sex offenders now allowed in them, and one for families. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, no matter where you stand on the transgender bathroom bill, this interview is guaranteed to trigger you. Now, as exciting as that might be for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. That's not my intent to trigger you, but it is an opportunity for us to have some dialogue about this bathroom bill. Now, obviously there's lots of arguments on both sides. You know, transgender people are actually being murdered. So I can see the case for a safety issue on that side, but opponents and critics say that this bill is exactly how sexual predators are gonna get access to their victims. Now, here's here are some problems that I'm having with this, and that's what I'm gonna be talking with our guest about today. This whole gender dysphoria, gender identity, everything is sort of a new thing for all of us to be dealing with, yet it's being shoved in our face, and there is a federal mandate now policing people who don't agree with something. Mind you, this is something that people who are actually dealing with gender identity issues haven't even entirely figured out for themselves, yet it's already now becoming a federal mandate. Now, people embodying two genders isn't an entirely new thing. I think indigenous uh, populations even call it two spirits. And of course, we all know Prince and David Bowie were two mainstream people who didn't conform uh, to gender norms. But everyone is in a rush to be so trendy and progressive and just be all on it. States, states are now actually sponsoring sex changes for young people without parental consent. That is absolute madness. We are basically experimenting on young people without any idea of the long-term consequences. So my guest today is Walt Heyer. He is an accomplished author and speaker with a passion for mentoring those whose lives have been torn apart by unnecessary gender change operations. His website is sexchangeregret.com. So Walt, thank you so much for joining us here today. Now, before we get into your personal story, I wanna talk a little bit about your article, Drop the T from LGBT. I came across this article at The Federalist. For a lot of people in the gay community, it's been hard for them to disassociate themselves from the myth that gay men are pedophiles. And so that makes it really hard for them if they wanna adopt a child and all of that. Well, now uh, you argue that transgender people have high rates of psychological problems. It contributes to their identity expression and victimization. And so that reflects on the rest of the LGB community. So, yeah, sure. yeah. you know, now, of course, people are being mandated to accept this new gender identity. And frankly, it makes a lot of people very uncomfortable. So can you talk yes. to me a little bit about this? <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, I tried to illustrate that, you know, gays, lesbians, and uh, bisexuals are considerably different 
and the transgender population. And the transgender population, according to the research studies that I've been reading over the last 10 years, is that between 60 and 70 percent of them are suffering from what is known as a comorbid disorder and or some sexual fetish that leads them to act out as though they're a different gender when in fact no one can actually change gender. So the idea is that they're the gay lesbian community is kind of being associated with a group of people who have disorders when they in fact in the gay community do not. Mm -hmm. And of course, you make the argument that if something happens down the line where uh, some sexual pervert uses a, the bathroom bill to his advantage to, you know, for sexually predatory behavior, that's going to come back to haunt the LGBT community in full. Right. And, and the cities who approve it, I can see, are going to be caught up in uh, a lot of lawsuits when these things come down and, and women do get molested or, or worse, uh, injured, harmed, and and uh, who knows what can happen in the in the privacy of a bathroom because this can happen at night in a bathroom uh, it, it doesn't have to be in the full view of people in fact the predators will find the most uh, best place to go uh, follow somebody a gal into a restroom and and do something that is abhorrent and shouldn't happen absolutely and and it's less than 0.03 percent of the population who, yes, they need protections, but you're trampling on the, the rights of a massive amount of people, women and children, who don't necessarily want to be put in a bathroom with a man if they're victims of sexual assault, or maybe they don't want to have to explain to their child why that woman has a toolbox, yeah. so to speak. You know, it's right. a little bit advanced for a young person. So, so what do you think about the, uh, the political response to this whole issue? It seems as if it's really uh, the race to be the most progressive. Yeah, and I, you know, I do not understand how the lawmakers cannot get a grip on their uh, their own I ideas about opening bathrooms up. Uh, apparently, this is such a left right kind of thing vote wise because they want to curry favor with um you know, the left wing part of the party. So they open up bathrooms um, at the risk of um, children and women um, to be um, hurt, injured, uh, and so forth. So, you know, the lawmakers are being pushed by the LGBT, um, probably more the T than the LGB, and other groups to open the bathrooms up. And, you know, the president of the United States has a transgender in the White House in the Office of Personnel. So he's uh, push hard on this adv advocacy part of the bathroom bills across the country. So uh, it's not a good thing. Well, switching gears here, let's talk about a little bit what gives you the authority to speak on this subject, as well as why are you so passionate about educating people who might be thinking about transitioning? Yeah, well, I started out as a four-year-old transgender kid and lived out that whole transgender life until uh, I had surgery at the age of 42 and lived as a female for eight years in San Francisco uh, named Laura Jensen and lived the life. And so I know what goes on. I, I know what happens. And after I lived eight years, I began to study psychology at the University of Santa Cruz and, and discovered quite to my own surprise that these disorders uh, in transgenders are rarely diagnosed, rarely treated, and there's a large group of disorders, separation anxiety, dissociative disorder, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and who knows what else that goes on that never gets treated or diagnosed. And even in the, the movie, The Danish Girl, we saw uh, the advent of uh, autogynephilia, where actually transgenders actually fall in love with themselves in the mirror because they appear as a female. So we can see that these sexual fetishes become an ideology or a gender identity uh, that's that needs treatment, doesn't need a new dress and red pumps. Right. And that's the big thing that sort of kind of really has wanted me to bring you on the show today because that's the thing that I 
uh, find so frightening about all of this. We live in a country where a, a parent is being investigated for allowing their child to play in the backyard unsupervised. Yet in states like Oregon, the state is sponsoring sex changes without parental consent. And so you're so concerned because perhaps there are some underlying psychological issues that aren't even being dealt with because a gender psychologist is just gonna say, oh, I know what this is. You need to start taking hormone blockers and then we're gonna give you a sex change and you'll be fixed. Right, the problem with it is, is what we do know is that 90, up to 94% of children who at a young age identify as transgender, if we leave them alone, and don't push or advocate for them to change genders will actually grow out of their gender dysphoria and become normal adults. The problem today is that all kids, every single kid ever born is gonna be curious about gender as they should be. The difference is that when today a parent sees someone curious about gender, they're identifying him as a transgender and then pushing him to change genders as though it's a good thing. And I can tell you from my own life, it's not a good thing. Uh, it damages and destroys life. It develops psychological disorders. Many of them become alcoholics and drug addicts. They never get their gender dysphoria resolved through changing genders. In fact, the original founder of transgenderism, Harry Benjamin at his clinic, found that there were far too many suicides and unhappiness after changing genders uh, and so even his own clinicians at that clinic decided to go into psychiatry so that it could actually help people, but still were caught up in changing people's gender for whatever reason. It's got to be some power thing from these large, powerful groups and schools and all the way to the White House that I've written about as well. Absolutely. Well, Walt, stay right there. We're going to take a quick break, and I want to kind of recap what we've been speaking about um, as well as explaining what you mean when you say you are a four-year-old transgender. So we'll be right back. Now, my guest today is Walt Heyer of sexchangeregret.com. Now, Walt, before the break, you said that you personally were a four-year-old transgender. Explain. Right. right. I started out at the age of four uh, at my grandma's house, uh, cross-dressing, and uh, this became my little secret between uh, grandma and me. And grandma eventually made me a purple chiffon evening dress. And what I realize now in hindsight, not at the time, I was very excited about the fact at the time I was four, year old, four years old that my grandma was, you know, she just loved me as a little girl. She was fawning over me. She was much more excited about me being a girl than, uh, than I, and she was as me being a boy for sure. And so I got excited about the attention about all the, uh, the stuff that she was doing because I was being a girl was sort of exciting to me. So I think she created this excitement in me to want to change genders. And not only that, what I realized today and looking back is that she started kind of a fracture in my identity that I didn't realize was going on at that time. And it began to fracture my identity as to who I was. So I began my life at four years old thinking that I should have been a girl, that I would have been much more appreciated and liked and my life would have been much better as a girl. So this continued all the way through into my teens. I developed a female name, but I kept it a secret and didn't tell anybody. So I internalized the Crystal West became the first girl name that I picked up when I was 13 and progressed on. I did get married told my first wife about my gender issues, and we both thought that getting married would cure them. And I ended up having two children, had a very successful career in the automobile industry. And by the time I was 38 years old, began to consider going through surgery and changing genders because I felt like this voice that had started at four years old about changing genders needed to be uh, who I really was. And so... I was diagnosed with gender dysphoria and underwent gender reassignment surgery at the age of 42. The problem is that that four-year-old child was a broken child. It was not reality. And I didn't learn that until I studied psychology that we're actually breaking children by changing their genders. We're not helping them one bit. And that is why I'm so passionate about seeing 
parents begin to understand that they need to affirm children in the gender they're in. Now, it's much more difficult today because there's so much on television, there's so much advocacies, the schools and every place else is pushing this agenda very hard, so it makes it extremely difficult for parents. But everything that we do in life is about modeling. And if we can model the behavior of men for little boys and have men in their life that can show them what a man's to be like, it's going to help them develop a good sense of who they are. If that is absent from their life and they only have these other things going on where grandma's cross-dressing them or they're playing with their sister's cross-dressing or their mother's helping them put on earrings and guiding them to gender change, they are not going to have a healthy psychological life. And that's why we see in the young population, I think it's age 10 to 24, are attempting suicide at a rate of over 50%. Now, I'm here to tell you that if changing genders was really a good thing, you would not see the high rate of suicide among the young people and the adults who are attempting suicide at the, at the rate of 41%. People who are happy with their life do not try to end it by committing suicide. Right, and that was something that you found, uh, I guess, uh, seven years into living your life as a woman. You were fine, you were happy, everything was, was great, but then the novelty of it wore off, I suppose, and those underlying uh, issues with the depression <laughs> and everything began to resurface. And so was it at that point that you sought out a different sort of psychiatric treatment or someone else that maybe wasn't a um, LGBT advocate type where Right. The first thing that really happened was when I studied psychology and realized that, you know, transgenderism is comprised of psychological disorders or sexual fetishes, that you're not born that way. Nobody is born transgender. That is a total myth. And you can look on my blog at waldhire.com and see all the research work. I don't know how many studies are in there, but they all show that nobody's born transgender. It's a childhood developmental disorder that never gets properly treated. So when I found out that it was a mental disorder, then I went to clinical therapists and I was going to two of them at a time, sometimes six times a week to dive into this issue so that I could get the treatment I needed. It takes a lot of work. Once you've gone through the gender reassignment surgery, it's even more difficult. I mean, I made it and I've been restored and redeemed and I'm back living as a man now for well over 20 years. I've been married this coming May for 19 years. And uh, so there is freedom, but it's only going to be found in good psychotherapy. The problem is there's very few good sound psychotherapists who are willing to diagnose and treat the comorbid disorders that are affecting the ide ideology of transgenderism because the advocates, advocate groups are trying to shut down the therapy so you can't go get it. Right. You're saying uh, therapy is actually outlawed in four states, California, New Jersey, Oregon, Illinois, and the District of Columbia. They've banned conversion therapy. Now, we've seen this where they'll try to do this uh, conversion therapy with gay or lesbian kids, but now they're saying even if you have these young people who are asking for the therapy that will help them with their gender confusion, they're, they're being denied it, and they're being given instead the answers to how they can change sexes, which biologically cannot be done. And ultimately, you're kind of holding that truth deep down inside. Isn't it amazing do. that if somebody wants to get help to, uh, to avoid changing genders, there's a group of people that want to prevent them from being able to do it? I mean, is that just totally insane or what mm -hmm. and so that's kind of the thing i i feel like i mean obviously anyone who's grown up with prince or david bowie you know you've been introduced to some mainstream characters there that don't con uh, conform to gender norms and so perhaps there is this third gender or whatever something that new that we don't fully understand but why are we experimenting on young children and changing their sex outwardly because you're not going to be able to change their DNA or their chromosomal makeup. Uh, what we know is that uh, regret sets in. I've got a stack of letters to my left here from people who uh, writ written me from three weeks to 30 years after undergoing reassignment surgery that they have severe regret. They're asking me now to help them restore their life. And they come in every single day from 
different. I, I reach 180 countries around the world. My website's getting nearly 50,000 hits a month. And people are really struggling with this. And the, the adv advocacy groups are so powerful that they're really diminishing the ability for people to get the help they need. So there's only a few of us out there that are telling the truth and trying to help people understand, get the psychological help you need and avoid going through a radical surgery that's not going to really resolve the psychological problems in the long run. Absolutely, and we have just about a minute left. So what do you see going forward? I mean, is obviously in your experience, this was decades ago, so you know, times are changing. Do you think that this is just going to become more accepted, more people are going to be going through getting surgery they might regret, or will we learn that this is actual, uh, an actual third gender, an actual reality? Well, there isn't a third gender. We know that. We, we do know that you can convince people that acting out a behavior um, can be uh, sexually arousal, it can be exciting but it is not an actual gender, it's just a psychological disorder. And people, if they can just begin to understand that there is help out there and the advocates won't prevent them from getting it, we can see this diminish. But as long as they stand in the way of good therapy, we're gonna see this continue to grow and we're gonna see the same number of suicides or more and more unhappiness through this whole transgender phenomenon. Mm. Well, Walt Heyer, thank you so much for all of your research and for sharing your story with us today. You have a massive amount of information for people uh, to take a look at if they have any questions, parents especially, um, at sexchangeregret.com. Walt, thank you so much for joining us. It is my pleasure, thank you. Get Brain Force at 25% off for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably notice I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of Brain Force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're going to crash afterwards. And the cool thing about this is it's not just a bunch of energy compounds that are going to fire your brain up to a higher RPM or whatever, which it does do. This is sustainable. This isn't going to spike and you're going to collapse and you're going to feel really bad afterwards. Words. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We're looking at the television screen for research purposes, whatever we're even doing, trying to learn something or staring at the computer all day, working, doing good. You're still damaging your brain. You will find Brain Force and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Get Brain Force at 25% off for a limited time at InfoWarsLife.com. And we thank you for your support. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. We're here with our live coverage of the Northeastern primaries, and they've already called it for Trump. He has swept the region uh, by a very wide margin, and Hillary Clinton, they're giving her Delaware as well as Maryland. Yeah, so I don't think anybody's surprised to see the numbers that Trump has here. Um, a little bit surprised to see Bernie Sanders. I thought maybe he would do better in that region. 
And now I guess the big question is, Leanne, are the other contenders, Cruz, Kasich, and Sanders going to drop out the race at this point? Well, that is the big question, and a, and a lot of people as well on the uh, with the Democrats, they're talking about Sanders. Uh, is he going to drop out at this point? But, I mean, he's really close to Hillary Clinton. So we're seeing on this side, there is actually a race between them. They're actually neck and neck, whereas on the Republican side, they are so far behind. Now, th this is just a chart uh, based on last week, so this isn't even counting the delegates that that Trump was able to secure tonight. But Cruz would need 92%, would have needed 92% of all the remaining delegates, which isn't going to happen. Kasich, 149%. So it's well, just not going to happen. Well, you think about it's how these guys crazy. had to pull their resources to, you know, go after Donald Trump. And they still were able to come up with nothing. The, the two of these guys yeah. working together uh, pulled no, <laughs> no states in this uh, mo most recent uh, result. Right. Now we've got the a lot of the a lot of the crew here with us. Richard Reeves is also in the building, so we're gonna be joining him uh, just after the break. We're also gonna be taking some of your phone calls. I will give you that number to call here after we take a break here. But uh, we wanna know what you think about the Cruz Kasich Alliance, which seems to have fizzled out relatively quickly. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> they put too much thought into that. I think the thought was Let's take down Donald Trump, not so much how are we going to do this, how feasible is this, <laughs> is it even, you know, legal or, you know, yeah. supposed to happen. Uh, Trump's calling foul, saying these guys are colluding together. I don't know if that's such a big deal in politics, and maybe, but we'll see uh, Well, it's like uh, the we'll two guys happens. inside the suit and one standing on the other's shoulders trying to be big and, oh, look at us, we're scary now, we've joined forces, and they're No, so it was like losers. two kids forming, you know, a, a half-made Captain Planet. That's what it seemed like to me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have something I, I want to point out here. Maybe you guys can get a shot. Let me pull it up here on my iPad. Uh, this was something that was very interesting that I saw on Drudge earlier today, and it was Sean Hannity's site. And if you look at it, they have uh, the voters, uh, the delegates for a particular region out in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And you'll see here it has a very stark difference uh, when you talk about the GOP versus uh, the Democratic ballot. And you'll see uh, the difference here is when they talk about the delegates, they tell you who the delegates are committed to on the Democratic side, but nothing for the GOP. And it's very interesting right. to me, Leanne. So you don't even you can, know who you're... Yeah, so you can see who's voting for or who has the support of Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. But when you look at the GOP, you see no such thing on that ballot at all. So I think it is very interesting that they would go about it this way. And last week, we saw something uh, vaguely similar. Uh, there's a gentleman who was talking about the Democratic ballot just in general, and he was pointing out the fact that you had to select six delegates. Now, if you looked at that ballot, Leanne, you would see that there were six delegates for Hillary Clinton, but only five for Bernie Sanders, which is to say if you're forced to select six delegates, you could only select five for Bernie Sanders. You had to submit a vote for Hillary Clinton. Now, I'm not even a Bernie Sanders supporter, but I think they're railroading this guy and just pretty much giving him the, the wrong end of the stick here. Absolutely. The game is absolutely rigged in favor of Hillary Clinton. And you have these articles uh, where she's just... It's, it's, you can see the stark comparison with the way that they're treating the whole Trump, Cruz, and Kasich thing versus Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. The same thing is going on. But on the one side, you have it that Trump and his supporters are ridiculous because they don't understand the, can't, the delegate system. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a totally a fair race. Anyone could win at this point. And on the other side, the exact same thing is happening. But they, they paint it as Bernie Sanders is just this you know, sad guy just holding on. He doesn't have a shot at all. And Hillary Clinton's like, you know, he needs to go ahead and unify the party. And and they ask, they ask them, do you agree that everyone should unite behind Hil Hillary if she wins? Like, not even Hillary. Do you will you unite behind Bernie Sanders if he wins? Absolutely. They <laughs> it's a stacked deck. There's no doubt who they're favoring in the Democratic Party. It, they being the main establishment. Mm -hmm. Who these guys are favoring. Meanwhile, if you go to these uh, Democratic rallies. Bernie Sanders rallies, you see all manner of support. You see big name celebrities going out to these Bernie Sanders events. Uh, some got arrested here recently, mm -hmm. a big name Hollywood stars. So the man definitely has some pull. He has some uh, big names behind him. They want you to act like none of that happened, none of that exists, and just focus on Mrs. Clinton and the 20 people who show up to her rallies 
where she says she wants to, you know, ban this and take that away from you. <laughs> Don't per pay attention to Bernie Sanders at all. Well, and Jakari, right. remember, 33% of Bernie Sanders supporters said they will not vote for Hillary Clinton. So I don't know how they're going to rectify that in a general election. That's going to be, I think, their biggest problem. That's on the Huffington Post that came out a few weeks ago, and I was asking people in Wisconsin that. And there was a lot of them who said they wouldn't vote for it. They said they were going to put their vote towards Jill Stein, who is the Green Party candidate. Absolutely, Rob mm -hmm. Dew chiming in there. And that's right, Rob. We see a lot of people who are very content not to have anything to do with Mrs. Clinton at all, though they keep trying to force it down your throat, saying that she's the most qualified. Let's say that she is the most qualified. I think the woman also has the most scandals out of everybody right. in this race. You know, Trump says, you know, stupid stuff here and there. This woman has been involved in actual scandals that have hurt people, and nobody wants to talk about that. Like, caught on tape laughing about how she got a rapist off, even though she knew he was guilty, mm -hmm. but yet she's the candidate for women, w went after all of Bill's bimbos, as she coined that phrase. Yes, so. uh, and of course we know the Benghazi situation. Ambassador Stevens was giving her uh, the emails, the cables, months before he was murdered, and then they came out and said she said that uh, he was killed over some stupid, you know, Innocence of Muslim movie, even though we saw the article from, I believe, Steve Watson last week, where she was talking to the Egyptian prime minister at the time and saying that we know this has nothing to do with that stupid movie. We're just going to say it on TV. Right. And not to mention, you know, all the other ways with funneling money through the Clinton Foundation and or, uh, giving State Department favors in return for those huge donations. She doesn't want to give out the transcripts to her speeches that she's made to the big banks, but she just wants you to trust that she's going to be really tough with them and, and make sure that they start behaving this time around, just elect her first. She's just a career politician. and uh, She is the epitome of a career politician. Now, uh, we're going to go to break here in just a couple minutes. We'll come back with Richard Reeves, Joe Bix, and of course your calls. But I want to talk about a little bit lighter note. I saw this earlier and it just kind of made me smile, Leanne. Uh, there's an article out. You know how it is every presidential election. People say, I'm going to leave the country if X candidate wins. <laughs> now, once again, there's a lot of people I'm not supporting in this race. But if these people decide to leave the country, it will not hurt my feelings one mm -hmm. bit. Uh, the list includes, <laughs> but is definitely not limited to. I have a CBS News report, but you guys can find it any place. Uh, the list includes John Stewart, Whoopi Goldberg, Leah Dunham, uh, Samuel Jackson. I actually like Sam. I guess he doesn't have to be in the country to make his movies, but uh, the list goes on and on. People saying uh, they don't like Donald Miley Trump. Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Uh, well, a bunch of <laughs> other ones. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell, I guess. I don't know if she's going to Don't the let country. the door hit you. Yeah, you guys can get the hell out and stay gone. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Take the social justice warriors with you, please. Yeah, and it's just how it is. <laughs> and it's uh, all the, the normal suspects and all the normal rhetoric we see around this time. Of course, these guys aren't going to go anywhere. They just like to make a big deal. Mm. Puff and puff about things. Yeah, well, they say they'll go if we pay for them to get out. So, and I think you could probably lifestyle. you could probably find a Kickstarter for people to pay to get Lena Dunham out of the country. <laughs> not that <laughs> I hate true. her more than anybody else, but my understanding is she's not exactly that popular with the conservatives. Now, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about uh, some some people are calling voter fraud on both sides of the line. Uh, we have poll workers who are have actually come out confirming. Uh, that it's a rigged primary, um, voter machines giving out the wrong ballots, um, just all sorts of things, as well as the fact that 90% of female voters reject Senator Ted Cruz in the latest poll out of Rhode Island. You know, she sounds surprised, women's, women's intuition, got to trust it. <laughs> and uh, one thing, uh, David was talking about this earlier today on the live show, uh, the Cruz and Kasich campaign, the apps they're using to spy, on their various uh, users, uh, the people in their campaigns. And uh, Kit Daniels has the article pointing out how these guys are basically custom tailoring uh, their door-to-door -door interactions with people. So yeah. they can look up on app, oh, this guy likes this, he likes that. Then he walks up to the door and they say everything that you want to hear. And yeah. that's pretty creepy in my personal opinion. Absolutely, yeah. that you can say you have a friendship and you're really getting to know people. Well, stick around, we will be right back. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. 
all organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. And welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I am here with Shakari Jackson and the rest of the crew for our live coverage and analysis. We're going to go ahead and give you the number to call in. We want to hear what you guys think about this crazy presidential primary season we've got going on. The number to call in is 877-789-2539. And you can see the number there at the bottom of the screen. That's 877-789-2539. Now we're going to go ahead to the other studio. We've got our political correspondent in the house, Richard Reeves. Uh, is he ready back there, guys? Yeah, we're ready. All right. Hi, Leanne. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. All right. I just want to make sure we're connected here. <laughs> yes, uh, they're already calling pretty much every state, all five states, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, for Trump. And it looks like in most of those, he's getting in that 60% neighborhood, which is exactly... Those are the numbers he's really going to need to try to have any kind of chance of reaching 1237. It's still going to be, it's still going to be close. It's still going to be tight. And one thing Jukari was talking about at the opening of the show is he was talking about the way that Ted Cruz and John Kasich were working together in uh, these elections. Well, that really starts, it's actually started, but what the, the states that they're referring to are actually not in play tonight. They already knew they already knew kind of the results we're seeing tonight. They already knew that that's what they were going to see. Mm -hmm. So the states that they're talking about are the upcoming states of next week on next Tuesday in Indiana. They're looking to see if they can get Cruz close to Trump or maybe a victory for Cruz in Indiana to try to take delegates away from Trump. And then Kasich is going to bow out and not be active, not spend money, not visit Indiana. And then in Oregon... In New Mexico, it's going to be the reverse. Kasich's going to go work Oregon, you know, diligently. He's going to run, spend his money there, going to run ads. Same thing in New Mexico. So they think that Kasich can take potentially more delegates from Trump in Oregon and in New Mexico. They think Cruz can take more, more delegates from Trump in Indiana. So that's the states that they're colluding to, uh, so pretty much what you're Trump. saying is, is Ted Cruz got schlonged by uh, <laughs> Donald Trump tonight in an epic fashion, right? Right. The, yeah, I'll tell he you just what. whimpered away with his tail, but he didn't even put up a fight here. I mean, he got 60% in all states thus far. They haven't brought in Maryland yet. They still have 0% of what he's got, but they've already called it for him. But I mean, 66% in Rhode Island for Trump, 61 Pennsylvania, 65 in Delaware, 60 in Connecticut. I mean, the guy is... Uh, the Trump trains are chewing, man. Can't, you, there's nothing you can do right now. <laughs> and Joe and Leanne, and one thing we've got to be talking about and looking at with these numbers is up to Wisconsin, prior to Wisconsin, when Trump was winning states on a primary vote, a popular vote primary, he was getting in the range of 35 to 45% of the vote. Now he's hitting that 60%. The, those, those, you know, hopefully he would have hit that right from January in Iowa, but he wasn't. But where are those extra 15 or 20% coming from and it looks like five or ten is coming off of Kasich and Ted Cruz is giving up 15 or 20 percent from his voter. Well Trump's picking up a early. lot of voters though from these union workers because you got to understand these union workers are all you know Democrat areas and these guys push that stuff. I've got a lot of friends who work in unions and they're constantly called on day-to-day -day basis. Don't forget to go out and vote for Hillary Clinton tomorrow. Don't go and don't forget to go out next week and vote for Hillary Clinton. And they push her as their candidate. But these guys are sick and tired of it. They've seen what she's done. They're sick of the lies, the BS. And these guys are all closet Trump fans. And that's who they're actually going and voting for in these primaries. So I think that's really going to be a big boost for them. And it has been today, it shows. Well, and for those guys, what they, do, what they have to do is just remember back to 1992 
too, when Bill Clinton said, oh, I don't know about NAFTA. We really got to look at NAFTA. I don't think it's a great idea. First thing Bill Clinton did with Hillary in, in the Oval Office, basically, is they've got NAFTA going. So that for longtime union guys that have been around for many years, I was actually in the Teamsters back in the 80s. I knew that I didn't like NAFTA back then in 92. So if those older guys are talking to the newer union guys, and Joe's absolutely right, the union guys are absolutely going to be going for a nationalist that's going to protect manufacturing and industrial business here in the United States. Now, Richard, I know that uh, you're planning to go out to Cleveland here pretty soon in the near future to uh, get on the, the whole scheme out there. Can you tell us a little bit about that trip you have planned? Well, it looks like there's going to be four to six crew members here from the office heading up there. And uh, I'll tell you what, it should be uh, literally a riot of some type <laughs> because, because, I mean, the leftists were throwing riots in 2008 in St. Paul over the nomination of John McCain. So, if you, you know, if we're sitting there nominating yeah. limpy, uh, wimpy well, John Trump's McCain. Well, Trump's got a 60% disapproval rate, apparently, in all these polls. So, yeah, I mean, anytime that you go to any of these Trump events, like we were just in Manhattan not too long ago with Rob Dew, um, it's intense to see these people show up, and they show up to protest, and they're being paid to do it. They have all these fancy signs, but not one of them know why they're there. Not one yep. of them know what fascist <laughs> means. Not no, One of them knows what half the things that they're screaming out about even mean. So, yes, Cleveland will be a riot. It will be intense. It will be interesting to see these people show up in larger numbers and making fools of themselves while we sit there and try to debate them, which is going to hardly be the case, but we'll try. Well, what I think is really interesting is that, of course, the media, all eyes are on Trump and what's going on with this uh, race, basically just saying that it's it's in in the can there for Clinton. But I mean, Sanders is really not that far behind her as far as the delegates go. He's got 1268. She has 1588. So I honestly don't believe that Clinton is beating Trump in any poll. The kind Did of people I say Trump, who, I meant Sanders. Oh, but I mean, but I mean, for the general election as well, though, mm -hmm. people keep saying that Trump loses to Clinton in every general election poll or every poll, you know, like that. And I just don't see it. When I go out and meet people, I've only met a few men who actually said that they actually like Clinton. And that was a big Irish guy in downtown Manhattan, which blew my mind. <laughs> You know, most people I was meet... Was he holding his wife's purse? <laughs> it was bartending. <laughs> he had a kilt on. <laughs> well, I guess, Joe, you and I should go out on the road for a couple of Clinton events and we could find some more people. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's a guy who's whipped, hold his it's, wife's yeah, hand, and he's exactly. like, well, I have to be here, you know, <laughs> if I want to continue to have... She basically it's time that are going for a on. woman. Usually the we went to a Clinton rally yeah. where Bill Clinton, the ex-president of the United States, yeah. is there, barely 600 people. Barely 600 people. I mean, I just, I think there's no popular support for these people. It's, no, it's, it's, it's a, a propaganda support. machine that's pumping so hard. Like they, they want to scare people who are kind of up in the air about voting for Trump or whoever. And they want to shove down your throat every day that it's Clinton, that she's the only choice. She's the only choice for America. She's the only one that's going to move us forward in any kind of way. When you actually go out on the ground and you go to these different states and you talk to people, everyone, when they see a Hillary for Clinton or a Hillary uh, for prison t-shirt smiles. I mean, they love it. Even when the Bernie people in Manhattan were like chanting and wanting pictures, you know, with that shirt. I mean, no one likes her. And I honestly think that people shouldn't be scared to go out and actually vote for who you want, because I don't believe that she is leading in all this stuff. I believe that Sanders could take it from her. It's very possible. And I think Trump, if it comes down to Trump and Clinton, he could annihilate her. Yeah, I agree. And I love what you said, too, about people getting out there, because that's something we're really seeing this time around is that the people, they are awake, they're angry, they're finally pissed off enough that they are confronting these crooked politicians and they're not backing down and just letting them talk to them in their slow voice, slow so you can understand, you stupid Americans. We're actually going to play this really good video of a Trump supporter confronting Ted Cruz over the delegate process and he uses that exact voice of like let me just talk to you because i know you're just not that smart and you don't understand this when frankly <laughs> the media has done that that's been their job uh, throughout the decades to not explain this delegate process and to make you think your vote counts and then now that everyone really is starting to get active and involved and they're seeing how the game is rigged now the media is playing it like Oh, well, the, why are you so stupid to not know how this goes? The curtain's been pulled back. It's been exposed. Yeah. And that's one thing that Trump's really done. 
You know, the fact that he brought forward this whole thing and he's now forcing the media, forcing these political pundits, forcing these so-called experts to actually come out and explain the process of how this actually works. Because, quite frankly, most people have never known, not even not even just the people who work in politics. A lot of those people don't even know either. But every day, Tom and Joe, Bob and, you know, Jennifer, whatever, don't have any clue what's really going on. They just go out, blindly cast a vote, and not understanding that you need to be involved at a state level like Richard always goes out and says when we go and talk to people, what can I do to get involved? He's like, get involved at a state level. You can really make a change there. Right. And he's also been able to ramp up the amount of people that are uh, turning up to vote. 8.7 million votes. That's more than a 60 percent increase uh, since 2012, whereas the Democratic turnout has actually collapsed at 20 percent down. 65,000 people in Pennsylvania switched from Democrat to Republican to vote. 25,000 in Massachusetts switched over from Democrat to Republican this year alone to vote for Trump as well. So Right. And that's something that you're seeing in the media now is that Trump hasn't been able to increase the party. Like, ugh, they just, I just can't stand the lies. We're going to go to uh, take a phone call now, guys, if we're ready. It's tiny font, so thank goodness I have excellent vision. Jeremiah in Washington, he wants to talk about Cruz and Kasich, the double team. Is he, are we ready? Hello, hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, you. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I'm talking about, like, how, like, Trump, Trump and Cruz are just completely going head to head. Well, when Kasich and uh, crews are just teaming up. They're going to start splitting up states. It sounds like from listening to Glenn Beck and how to get it into a contested convention. And it's kind of messed up. Uh, they're messing with politics. And it should just be our vote, honestly. I don't know. Well, I, I, I agree with you. And it's just so interesting to see uh, so, like, Ted Cruz a couple weeks ago bragging about how he just had this sweeping victory when the people didn't even vote, it was the delegates. Colorado said, you know what, it, we it, don't exactly. even need... It, 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 the system needs to be fixed. Even I even feel bad. I'm not even nowhere near a Bernie supporter, but I feel bad for the guy. I because do too. he's not getting anything. <laughs> right, and he has... Well, what he's getting is, you know, eight... How many? 88,000? 8, I mean, all I know is every time tens I go of out thousands to, of people I go showing out up to any rally. college campus, if I go to the University of Texas right now, Bernie, everybody's feeling the burn. <laughs> that, that's that's what it is. So when I see these polls talking about uh, Hillary is leading, yeah, you find a few Hillary supporters here and here and there, but mainly it's people feeling the burn. So when I see these polls, I have a very well, difficult time believing it. Mm -hmm. The thing you have to understand, though, as well, though, people who are feeling the burn also don't feel the need to get up off the couch and go vote. What they're, do, what they're doing is sitting at home eating Cheetos on their mom's couch in their basement, and they're doing polls all day on Fox News, CNN, Reddit, whatever it may be, and they're too lazy to actually go out. They, they will go to a protest and make $10 an hour and complain, <laughs> you know, about, you know, Donald Trump, Trump, Hitler, whatever you want to call them, but they won't actually take the time to go wait in line and vote. Right. Well, that's a good thing, a good point that you bring up there, Joe, to all you Bernie Sanders supporters. You have to get up off your butt and go do something. Like I said, I'm not even supporting the guy, but I do want to see an honest, fair election. I don't think he's getting that, and I think they're going to continue to steal it from him if people don't come out in larger numbers. I know he has larger numbers and get vocal about it. Right. And thank you so much, Jeremiah and Washington. And that's kind of what's so interesting is like, it, well, like we see Cruz come out and just with that voice and say, you know, we had a sweeping victory. How wonderful. Is he point. gonna do the same thing? I mean, can you imagine if we have a contested convention, yeah. who is gonna be able to walk out on that stage and take the oath and be like, Thank you, America. You you really like me. You really well, it's voted to the for point me. where they don't even buy that in the media. He tried to say that recently and he got shut down. He's like, No. No, like answer the question. Like yeah. they're, they're, they're sick of hearing that. There's like lion's head. You didn't come here. <laughs> yeah, we all this stuff away. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the problem. Is like we we watch in all the debates. We're like he will not answer the question. He yeah. is a master debater. He knows how to not answer the question, and people are sick and tired of it. He Absolutely. is the definition of a career politician. Old Lion Ted. Oh, Lion Ted. Well, let's go ahead and take another phone call from Justin in New York. He wants to talk about the establishment stealing the election. Go ahead, Justin. Like she could be allowed to be running and she's basically a criminal on the presidency. Yeah, she has a very sketchy record. Uh, nobody's not that. We'll be locked up in a quick second. Yeah, absolutely. And you're not even allowed to talk about it. She laughs in your face. 
when the, the, she says, you know, the GOP will never see me in handcuffs. She laughs at the American people when uh, she makes light of all the 30,000 emails that she deleted from her private homebrewed server saying, oh, it was just my yoga exercises. If you were running I mean, for student council and you had a record of cheating on tests, you wouldn't even get voted in. How can we even have a discussion of this lady being a presidential candidate possibly when she's being looked at by the FBI, when she's got blood on her hands, when she's been involved in so much corruption? I mean, we, we honestly, we can't even blame the system. We have to bl blame the dumbed down people who are actually willing to sweep all that aside under the rug and go, you know what? Hmm. At the end of the day, if you, if you really put away the FBI investigation, the constant lying, uh, the blood on her hands, she's a war criminal. At the end of the day, she's not a bad person. I mean, that's what people are thinking. That's well, insanity. And the constant pandering to all the minority communities. She actually went hot sauce. on a radio show and said, <laughs> oh, I keep hot sauce in my bag. Oh, is that Clinton coughing in the I <laughs> You know, and she's sickly. She is a sickly woman who is getting a, a that, package of lung cleanse. That cough is a way. natural reaction. <laughs> that cough is a natural reaction. The body is, hap uh, that, that is happening. Whenever you put something foreign into your body, you have a reaction. That is her body going. Hey, you know hey, what? Hey, uh, yeah, I, I think got it's a idea. dark spirit. I got an idea her. for a brand new contest. Whatever the payout is for somebody who gives Hillary a bottle of lung cleanse. We're sending her to it. I think that's what we need. Okay, Alex Jones is sending her a bottle of lung cleanse. Yeah, but it'd be good to see a fan, note. though. Yeah, see a fan go up to a stage and deliver. Here, Mrs. Clinton, can you take this and stop coughing? That way we can just hear the, the BS coming out instead of your... How your amazing will... I think that would be so incredible because it will actually help it. Unless, of course, it is a dark demon that is trying to make take control of her voice. Um, oh, it's just, already taking control of her. Justin, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Um, no, actually, it's was, it was pretty interesting. I didn't expect to speak to all three of you at the same time. <laughs> I don't even just dominate There's the one conversation. Thing I, to, I would like to say, though, Leanne. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's so a family show. Oh, and thank very you. intelligent. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Justin. And, and I I'm really so happy appreciate to it. actually have spoken to you. <laughs> and uh, Alex is the best. <laughs> Well, we appreciate you, Justin. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, Justin, come on to Holland. Holla, holla, holla. Holla. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead to Michelle in Connecticut. She wants to talk about Trump and the convention. Yes, hi. Hey, hey. there. Um, this, is, this is Michelle from Connecticut. And I just wanted to say that I'm very happy that Donald Trump indeed did take Connecticut. But I do also have one valid concern. And that is, is that, like he pointed out, the Republican National Committee is pretty much rigged. I'm afraid that when Cleveland comes, I just think that they're going to try to find some way to not give him the nomination, even though he, at this point, if, if the statistics go with the or, yeah, he that, earned it. That's a, that's a very good point. Uh, is Richard still with us in the studio? Yes, I'm still here. I'm oh, sorry, uh, Richard in the other studio? It should be, yeah. Oh, no, yes. we, were, we were just looking at some. We here. were looking at some of the numbers. <laughs> some of the new numbers uh, just came in. But uh, she'll have to re-ask that question because we were looking at some of these numbers in here where they just gave uh, well, Trump Maryland with 51.9%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, what well, do you think about that? It, it, do you foresee some type of a scenario where they're going to not give Trump the nomination at this convention? What do you oh, see? Oh, absolutely. Actually, I do. Um, it's all wild, wild west, actually, because... One of the internal things, one of the internal memos that came out of the Trump campaign over the last five days was that they were anticipating having 1,400 delegates on the first vote in Cleveland. Now, the only way I can foresee that Trump would actually have the 1,400 is if they're able to, with the work of Paul Manafort, wrangle many of the unbound delegates. There are approximately 170 to 200 unbound delegates that are going to go to Cleveland for Trump to get 1,400 right now from this point that he's at means that they're counting on getting probably half of the unbound delegates, if not even more. So it's going to be interesting to watch that. But the flip side is the GOP establishment, I think they've still got the gambit going that they're going to have over 50% of the delegates that are going to be ready to vote in a Mitt Romney or another parachuted 
uh, candidate in, uh, I mean, Paul Ryan. Do you, so do you really think that this is going to be stolen, or is this, at the, at the end of the day, a lack of knowledge in the entire election process by largely the American people? Like, do you really think that he's having this, like, stolen from him, or is it, like I said, just so many people haven't really had a clue about what's going on, and we're well, just they, now well, finding well, it out. Well, that's the thing, and that's what Ron well. Paul said, is that that's, that is the real issue, is that they can, the establishment can change the rules as they go. So even if and if you know they do figure out how to work the delegates, they can change it. So it it's, it doesn't even matter if you do understand the delegate system; it can change in a flash in order to ensure that the establishment's candidate is chosen. The GOP is just like the Joker in the Batman movie. They've got all these different toys. They've got rules. They've got hardcore reception delegates that they know for years. It's just like in Kentucky. There's a full slate of delegates now that are all GOPers. They're establishment people with the, the potential exception of Rand Paul, but the fact that he was able to get on that slate and get elected in as a delegate makes me wonder about Rand Paul. So they didn't even go with Cruz delegates out of Kentucky. They, Mitch McConnell, Senator Mitch McConnell, the Senate leader in the uh, U.S. Senate, is running, lording over Kentucky, and he managed to wrangle all of the 28 or 30 delegates of Kentucky, however many they were. They weren't, they're not Cruz delegates. They're, they're delegates that Trump actually won in the caucuses back in, I think it was March. But those people are loyalists to the GOP. So they're bound, potentially bound, to vote Trump on the first vote. But on the second vote, watch out. And even on the first vote, here's what I'm concerned about on the first vote, is Trump could walk in there with 1237, or he could walk in there with 1300 or 1400, or he could walk in there with 1100. But I think another thing that we might see are what are called faithless delegates, delegates that are bound to Trump that turn their back and vote for somebody else. And I think that's a very strong possibility in this one. If they see that they can get a good batch, uh, a 50 or 100 batch number of delegates to go faithless, then the GOP will do that. So that's another way they can rig it is with the delegates, the faithful delegates, the Trojan delegates, the double agent delegates, and like Leanne, you were talking about the rules, they decided to at the RNC committee meeting in Florida last week, they were looking at what rule book that they were going to have in play at the convention, whether they're going to use the rule book that's used in the House of Representatives at the U.S. Congress level or Robert's Rules of Order. And in that case, they decided, hey, we're just going to wait till the convention and the rules committee that meets prior to the convention is going to hash that out. So they didn't make any rules changes. But even on the Rule 40B, which there's been a lot of discussion about, where you're supposed to win the, the majority of eight states to be able to have your name put on the nominee list. Well, there's a loophole in that, evidently, because it looks, one of the rules that I was reading in a, a paper written on that is that they could literally go and find eight majority states including territories, the, the uh, territories can also count as a state in this case. And if they can find eight states where there are GOP establishment majorities that are willing to vote for, let's say, Kasich, then Kasich could be on that first ballot because what they'll do is they'll go poll those people, those delegates in those states, they'll get it in writing. This is before the nominations process happens. They'll submit it in writing. The rule is they have to submit it in writing to the front to the uh, chair of the convention one hour prior to the nominations process starting. If they succeed in that, then the GOP will actually potentially have Kasich on the first ballot despite the rules change of 40B. So that's how convoluted and complex it can get right there. Yeah, I mean, and and like I said, it could change again. At yes. any at the drop of a hat if someone decides. But thankfully, we've got you here, Richard Reeves, to break it down for us. <laughs> um, Michelle in Connecticut, thank you. That was a great question. Now let's go to Habu in Wisconsin. Uh, you were talking about Trump altering his message and changing of the tone. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. And it's always good to connect with the InfoWars um, hip crew. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, it, it seems that prior to Wisconsin, um, Trump um, respectfully was almost uh, l like a buffoon, just saying anything that came to his mind. But after Wisconsin, he's been chastened, and um, it, now his his message is is is, is more um, palatable to the American people or those who even want to vote for him. But you know, may I, may I just ask you this? Uh, because you people, 
have uh, special uh, back channels to uh, the Trump organization. You, you know, some of the things he says are really out of this world, uh, even though I, I voted for him, uh, uh, such as, you know, uh, this whole uh, upping the military. I mean, which country is threatening us? Uh, it's going to kill our, us. I mean, as it is, we don't have enough money for lead pipes and in, in, uh, lead in the water in, in Flint or this, mm-hmm. that, the other. And he wants to up the military. He wants to uh, uh, have, you know, torture and some and bring up the rich. He also mentioned this, the rich. Salente mentioned this about Trump. So, so there are some things that you guys have to kind of beat. And, I, and everything you just said, me. I agree with uh, as yeah. legitimate criticisms of the man. There are definitely some very strong issues that need to be addressed concerning Donald Trump. Right. And I will say, you know, a lot of people have the complaint that the military has been uh, weakened under President Obama. But it, it I mean, I mean as, as compared to what we don't need to be in <clears throat> World War three. Well, I mean, there, there's Hillary there's Clinton definitely some bad things that are happening in, in the case of I've got a lot of buddies who are still in a lot of these officers and uh, senior non-commissioned officers are essentially being handed like pink slips. They're being told, hey, right in the middle of a deployment, like in Afghanistan right now, men and women have been handed these slips saying, hey, thanks for your service. You're done with. But you're going to finish out your deployment, and then when you come home, no one's going to take care of you, and the VA is going to screw you over. So they, they definitely are drawing back on a lot of stuff. But, I mean, I, I think it's absurd that our military is not already the largest, baddest thing in the world. And do we really have to worry about Kim Jong-un shooting a bottle rocket over here that he calls a nuclear warhead? Well, no. they want us to be very worried about that, saying that it could happen. I mean, at any moment... Any of our enemies, of course, it's, you know, but it's funny they say that that could happen, but it's impossible for ISIS to come across our southern border and bring some kind of bomb over and carry out a 9-11 style attack. That's completely preposterous. That's unbelievable. But Kim Jong-un on the other side of the country with a bottle rocket. Yeah, every time Kim lights lights off a rocket, it it crashes and burns. They had an article (laughs) just last week. The guy barely got it off the tarmac and flew over the water and exploded. U.S. Uh, satellites were monitoring the whole operation. But I agree with Joe. You know, they want us to be uh, concerned about a foreign ICBM. Meanwhile, you got ISIS and other very tangible threats, <laughs> just like you see there on your screen. Uh, that could be a very, uh, very real We threat. need a larger <laughs> military to take out that bottle rocket. That thing is out of control. Right. Yeah. Well, and we got to remember who gave him that bottle rocket, the Clintons. Yeah. Uh, give North Korea the bottle rocket along with Donald Rumsfeld. Uh, so it's totally, I wouldn't be surprised if Donald Rumsfeld is in an easy chair somewhere right now and his fingers just hovering over the red button to launch the nuke out of North Korea, uh, you know, if he uh, misses a martini or and something And every time like there's a, a Russian fighter jet flying by these, these fighter uh these fighter uh, decks or whatever, these, uh, you know, boats or whatever, everyone's like, oh, my God, there's such an imminent threat by Russia. But then you look at the actual footage and you watch the sailors and they're smiling. They're not scared because it's a normal thing that happens out Mm -hmm. there. If those guys were really worried that these Russian fighter jets were flying by, they'd be scrambling on the deck. You'd see, like, people panicking and their heart, you know, they're breathing hard. The camera would be shaking. Instead, they're all just kind of like, hey, waving around. There's no threat there. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, and they've destabilized all of the continents that they possibly could. They destabilize our bathrooms. On purpose <laughs> and all the civil unrest. And so this is kind of the, the need where they're, they're making it so that we have to increase the size of the military to defend ourselves against everything that they have been creating. Uh, it's the order out of chaos theory. Habu- well, Trump, Trump's ha- taken an interesting approach to the, the military spending. On the one hand, I do think he wants to build it up and make it bigger and stronger, but he's also simultaneously going to be looking at, hey, where can we save some money? We don't have to spend $30 bazillion on this one weapon system. Uh, maybe we can spend, uh, you know, a third of that money and have a lot more. He's going to be looking at ways to do more with less. And the other thing is, remember Ronald Reagan did the same thing. That's how he won the presidency was he had to talk about a strong military. So from a constitutionalist perspective, I know what our Constitution says is that we shouldn't be involved in all these foreign affairs. We shouldn't be meddling in all these things. But what, what we have now is the New World Order ready to provoke us into war all around the world. And so that's the right. other part of the equation is that, we, you know, we can pull back and try to live constitutionally here in the United States. But the New World Order boys are absolutely not going to allow that because they're going to plug in their weapon systems in other countries and they're going to come over here and do 9-11s on us 
or whatever. They're going to provoke events. They're going to have Brussels events. They're going to have Paris events. Well, their like weapons Joe are was Fox News about. and CNN. So that's just it. Uh, we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard spot with not being able to live out the Constitution right now. So in this regard, I think Trump has kind of figured out a way to thread the needle with that spending. Now, on torture, the caller was asking about the torture situation. And I know Trump's kind of vacillated. He's, he came on real hard and real strong about torture and nabbing or doing things to families of, of terrorists, et cetera. Then he backed away a little bit. He got reined in, and then he came up against it again. I think uh, his innate being wants to implement at least waterboarding. Well, I'm, but I'm, I think he'll get backed off. What, what I think it is at the end of the day is he's a tough guy. He's a rich billionaire guy. And he, 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 he sees what ISIS is doing is so barbaric, beheading people, burning them alive, you know, throwing homosexuals off bridges. I mean, just all kinds of crazy stuff. And he, it, do I really believe that he's going to ban Muslims from coming in? No. Do I really think that he's going to implement torture and all this stuff? No. What he's doing is trying to send a message to these guys. Hey, you continue to do this, and we're going to have to do something at some point in time because we can't let you guys chop all of our you know Christians' heads off on these beaches, and then we're going to sit back and you know, well, we're we're going to shut down Guantanamo. Maybe we'll guy we'll 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 slap you guys on the wrist. We'll trade you for a traitor like Bo Bergdahl and send you back into combat. I mean, right. Well, at some point in time, you've got to put, strike fear into the heart of the enemy. Yeah. And that's what he's trying to do. Right, exactly. I agree with you, Joe. And it's just like we talked about earlier, how we have uh, these the leaders of some of these drug cartels coming over to the United States because they want to take advantage of our laws and the safety that we have created here um, and get away from what they have in their countries. And, you know, that's what that's what a lot of these terrorists are kind of looking at the United States like we're these weaklings who are actually saying that maybe we just need to give these terrorists some jobs and they'll stop chopping people's heads off. I mean, well, if you, it's the social you justice do, warrior. It's is realize how a guy, a guy like El Chapo is begging to come to the United States of America to be incarcerated here. A guy who has been uh, arrested, escaped from multiple prisons, is begging to come here to the United mm -hmm. States of America. That tells right. you. Yeah, if you want to find out how bad a Mexican prison is, ask uh, Andrew Tamorsi of the U.S. Marine Corps how those prisons are. I mean, that's right. a nightmare. And that's yeah. how the real world is. If you sneak into Mexico, guess what? You're going to jail and it's not going to be pretty. But we can't take these guys in, these ISIS people. Well, it's okay, man. Let's just sing Kumbaya and hold hands and it'll all be all right. Yeah. When you could look at what's going on in Europe right now, we're, I'm looking at Germany and they are train stations, camps. They're overloaded with migrants. There's nothing they can do about it. They keep, and they asked for this problem. They said, hey, come on in. Let's see what'll what'll happen, and they're being indulated with uh, masses numbers of migrants, and that's what's going to happen here if we open the the floodgates or don't secure the border. We're just gonna they're just gonna be coming up through Mexico. We don't stop them right now. They're we're, they're told if you don't catch them in the water, you have to l let them stay, which is ridiculous. And by the way, we just found uh, some some photographic proof of John Kasich and uh, Ted Cruz colluding with each other. There it is. I think <laughs> they're flying to the next state to duo. see what's going to happen. <laughs> oh. yeah, I should add Marco Rubio to that. Jason Gary. <laughs> Marco is, I think, <laughs> manning the uh, the foam cannons. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that... Uh... We'll see how that collusion works out. Let's see they're what, they're, they're, see what they're the heading result straight is. for the uh, GOP convention. They're, <laughs> they're probably about to fly into a transgender bathroom right yeah, there. Yeah, they're flying to Target first to make a pit stop. <laughs> okay, well. hey, Joe, you just went and talked to people out in Target, and a lot of people were indifferent. They didn't even care. I mean, you know? I, I posted that that video to my Facebook page, and it got over <laughs> 200 and something thousand views and a thousand comments on it. Where Most people were furious by it. And the only ones who thought, well, it's okay to let a guy go in the woman's bathroom, they, they just would throw out these, you know, same typical terms you always hear when you go to these protests and never even had an argument or couldn't pull themselves out of their own selfish uh, desires and, and put themselves in a parental position where they have a young boy or daughter in something like that. I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous. It's not my fault if you're delusional. And right. Joe, I haven't well, seen that particular video, but it could be a situation where people are afraid to be politically incorrect and go against the transgender bathrooms. Oh, I, I, I guarantee well, you, a lot of people I talk to are scared to yeah. say it on camera. That's just like but a lot meanwhile, of, they go back home and they're clicking like on that video going, yeah, we agree with that. Probably, right. and that's just like Trump supporters. If you find them out on the street by themselves, they're afraid to say they're Trump supporters. The only way you can for sure find a lot of Trump supporters is you when you go to these big rallies, 
Oh yeah, they're they're not afraid to wear the shirts and the ball caps. And I the, wore my Trump the, shirt the other the night button. downtown, and I had people scoffing and looking at me like I was pure evil. And I just sat there. The more people looked at me and wanted to spit at me, the bigger smile I had and the taller I stood. Because you know what? I really don't even care about Trump at the end of the day. What I care about is my country. I care about freedom of speech, and I should be able to vote for whichever candidate I want to without fear of being attacked because some social justice warrior. Uh, you know, whatever <laughs> that I can't well, say. Hey, and going back to this bathroom the thing, campus. what's going to happen is they're going to force businesses to put in a third option bathroom. And it won't affect people like Target, who can quickly just do that. It'll affect small businesses because they're going to apply it equally to everybody and say, everybody's got to put in three bathrooms. you got to have a male, female, confused. and other. What's it like a question trans. mark in the last one? No, it'll be confused. Right. They'll just say confused. Well, and you're absolutely right about that. And that's, that is what's going to happen. And then, of course, they're going to target the small businesses because they won't have the money to fight off the lawsuits. And this will be an easy open and shut case, um, you know, after the PC police come down on everyone. Uh, so let's go ahead and take another call. Uh, thank you so much to Habu in Wisconsin. That was a, another really great question coming up. But we've got a stacked deck here. Uh, let's, ha let's see. Let's go to John in Pennsylvania. Hey, what's going on, guys? I just want to say you guys are uh, you guys are awesome. Thank you, John. Um, I just wanted to say um, today I was actually going through Facebook and I was actually scrolling through and I seen uh, through my news in Philadelphia that Trump was being prosecuted in New York for the fraud of the college that he had. Mm -hmm. um, and my thing was is that they're going to try and prosecute him during the same time as he's going to be running, and they're just going to let Hillary just. Basically, walk free. You know, nothing's mm -hmm. even going to happen. Don't even worry about it. You know, it's just it's very, very upsetting when you're a United States citizen and you're wanting better for the country. You know, it's just it's very hurting. You know, right? It's well, and it's group. totally political too because they're starting the trial uh, on the first day of the um, of the convention. So all eyes. I mean, that's all you're going to be seeing. Prepare yourselves, brace yourselves, because that's all that's going to be airing on the news. 24-7 is the live coverage of this trial and the convention, and it's just going to be back-to-back. -back. What difference does it make? Uh, yeah, what difference at this point does it make? <coughs> well, thank you, John, so much. Uh, I agree with you. Let's go ahead and move on to Jeff in Minneapolis. Mainstream Republicans are whack. <laughs> yeah, hi, hi everyone. Um, well, I was just uh, wanting to make an observation because I, I have a lot of... Uh, context in the Republican Party, having been a uh, chairman of our Senate district. And a lot of mainstream Republicans still see Ted Cruz as the Tea Party guy, the outsider. Mm. And I think where Trump could get some traction is maybe if he were to really go after Cruz on that issue and make sure that everyone knows that he's tied to the Bushes and the banksters and, and so on. Right. No, great point, Jeff. And that's exactly what he tried to uh, argue to this woman, the Trump supporter that confronted him over the delegate process. And he just kept repeating, now, remember, I'm the outsider. I've been against the establishment yeah. the whole time. <laughs> and she just looked at him dead in the face like, no, you aren't, buddy. You say you're against all these things, but then you don't even show up to vote. Yeah, he's really shown his true colors in the last six months or so. Just like paid off he's, some delegates. He, he's done a very good job of, you know, he, he did some things, you know, during his time. But when it comes down to the brass tacks, he's really revealed himself, not just as far as his politics, but as how he's running his campaign. You know, stealing the votes from Ben Carson, doing these other shenanigans that he's going on. And actually, I do believe we have that clip and we can play that. Go ahead, guys, right now. We haven't even voted at a local level yet. So how can you justify that? So this is a clip of the lady here talking. And once again, Lion Ted and she tells just repeats him, himself. Watch. <laughs> and the people who voted for the grassroots. That is the oh, grassroots. Of the establishment. And she told him straight to his face, you're an establishment candidate. With Colorado, the state that they, that they no vote was ever cast, they just chose them. Well, 65,000 people. Voted Wyoming, in. one of them, no, no vote was ever cast. The problem was Donald Trump and his campaign. Well, and this is the thing he keeps throwing up. The same thing he said to Sean Hannity. Hey, it's the, these hardcore Donald Trump. She said, Trump we haven't even voted yet, and you already got the delegates. Man. I spoke to at least See, and here 15 he's... delegates in Colorado that said they were uh, ousted from mm -hmm. meetings. They had different times for signing in that was supposed to be at 8, but then they found out, oh, it was at 6 a.m. instead of 8. So they missed out on signing in. 
and they said the Ted Cruz people kept to themselves, were very exclusatory. It was like a clique, they said, in high school. So that's what I was being told by delegates who were, some were state delegates last election. These people mm -hmm. have been through the process. They're not, they're not uh, delegate virgins. You know, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and that's the thing is that they can change the process on a whim so that they can ensure that their establishment candidate gets in. So it doesn't even matter if you do understand the delegate process. It doesn't have, it's different from election to election. And, and Rob, I'm glad you chimed in with that because it was you and I that back in early December actually did an interview for the nightly news talking about all this, that how the GOP was going to potentially bend rules, break rules, break laws, you know, break heads, et cetera. And these dirty tricks are just precisely the things to watch out for is uh, I was telling you, I was relating to you that story about how Ron Paul spoke at the Texas State Convention on a Friday in, in uh, 2012. And during the time that Ron Paul's speaking at that Texas State Convention, there's senatorial district caucuses going on where the GOP is electing people that are going to go to the state Republican GOP party and be that executive committee. So basically all the Ron Paulers, all the Liberty people and freedom They're all people, listening to him. They're all sitting there listening yeah. to Ron Paul in the main part of the convention center, and they're not participating in the caucuses. So that was one way they eliminated that threat that any uh, Liberty people would go to the state GOP. So... There are plenty of dirty tricks, like you said, them, you know, messing around with schedules and telling you, hey, go to room A and the actual right, function exactly. is in room B and things like that. We're so going to have a meeting over here. You go over this way. This is where all the Trump people are going. <laughs> right. So <laughs> that's, And they laugh and, and, and just steal the election. That's the and level it, of nonsense that are going on. So exactly. everybody has just got to be on their toes just to Ask super questions. level. Ask questions. Record people. Because when they start lying to you, you got to put the lies out. And I, well, another thing I recall about that interview when you guys went to Colorado, I believe it was, you were talking to one of the delegates, and he said he only had about a minute to speak. And that was the same no, for all the delegates. Seconds oh, 10 seconds. Oh, it's, oh, excuse ten me. Seconds. Uh, it's even worse than I, uh, I exaggerated yeah. there. Yeah, if 10 I'm seconds. 99, 69. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> and they had, they had, uh, uh, Ballots that had missing numbers, missing delegate numbers on them. There was all right. kind of stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, double for digits. For them to say, oh, it was all on the up and up. It wasn't yeah. on the up and up. And to just continually talk to the American people like they're stupid. Like Cruz was talking to this woman who was obviously educated. The conversation continued on from there. But he just was like, ma'am, ma'am. Okay. This He's is like, how it works. He's like, ma'am, listen to my talking point. Yeah. My campaign worked very hard to come up with this talking point. I need you to listen to it. And this is what everyone in America needs to do is get in these people's faces, get in the mainstream media's face, and just call them on their lies because they truly think that you're so stupid that all they have to do is talk to you in a little condescending tone and you'll just scamper away and go back to watching your TV and eating your TV dinner and shut up and quit complaining. It's the uh, Bobby Jindal syndrome. He got to speak after one of the presidential State of the Union addresses a long time ago, a few, many years ago, and he talked to everybody like this. And America, we have to come together. <laughs> you know, you can't talk to people like they're in kindergarten. We're, we're sick of it. We're yeah. done. We're done with your lies. We're exposing them day by day. And your days are numbered, establishment. We're not going to take it anymore. Fun camps. Yeah. So, Jeff, in Minneapolis, thank you so and much. Let me, let me address, add a little bit more to the answer for that caller. He was talking about how that uh, it would be good to see Trump hit Ted Cruz harder on the Bush connections, the Bush family mm -hmm. connections, and that history there, the legacy there with Cruz. But I would venture to say that Cruz might have already done himself in because when you add up the way they ganged up on Trump in Wisconsin, the way they did the delegates in Colorado, the way Kasich and Cruz have teamed up in these upcoming states of Indiana, Oregon, New Mexico, and all these other sundry things that have been going on, well, the results tonight are with uh, Connecticut, you've got Cruz with 12.1%. You've got Cruz at 10.6% in Rhode Island. You've got Cruz with 16% in Delaware. You've got Cruz with 136 in Pennsylvania and 194 in Maryland. So he's already hurt himself badly, whereas he was achieving 35 40% in some of the elections. Well, now it looks like, uh, you know, he may have done himself in. So he's going to be fortunate if he can rack up even 30 or 40% in Indiana and even more fortunate to get a win. So he may have damaged himself with all of these antics 
and all these stories about how he's nabbing and stealing delegates in Louisiana mm -hmm. and Mississippi and Maine and yeah. uh, everywhere else, that I think that bad PR uh, from the numbers that we're looking at tonight, they may have already come to roost on him. Right. Well, and he treats America like like she's stupid and she's absolutely not stupid and from the very beginning people have been saying something about his face i just don't trust him he looks like a liar and now you see in each state this is how he's winning the election is by doing these sort of nefarious secretive things in the background 10 so, percent in rhode island yeah so 10%. people people that's a you need to trust number. yourself, and I think that that's so awesome that people can see that even beyond all the propaganda and, and the continual push by the media to try to convince you, gaslight you, that what you truly feel, your instincts, you shouldn't trust them. And he's going to be your candidate, even though you didn't even vote for him. Uh, so thank you so much, Jeff, in Minneapolis. Uh, let's move along now. Um, I'm going to go to some of these people holding a little longer. Rodney in Indiana, loving the outsider, Trump. Hey guys, hey Leanne. Hey there. I'm just, I'm just a, I know we're only halfway there, but could you imagine a year ago when we thought it was just going to be a Bush Hillary campaign a year ago, if someone was said, we've got someone that's mentioning the 28 pages, he called Bush on no weapon, you know, WMDs mm -hmm. at the debate. Yep. We got Roger Stone on your show every week that's got an ear to the future president. He, he knows the truth about Kennedy when they, the coup that took took place in 62. Man, we're halfway there, and I'm feeling good tonight. This is awesome. Yeah. Is, and you guys and you guys are going to have the ear of the future president. <laughs> it's incredible. It's just awesome. Thank you for all your guys' work. It's, it's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rodney. And I, I'm... I'm I feel like no matter what happens, the curtain has been pulled back. Yeah, the giant that. is awakened, and people are definitely not going to just go back to their slumber after this. I really do not think so. Even with the DNC, uh, so many people that have been showing support for Sanders, if he doesn't rally around Hillary Clinton, if she takes it, and he doesn't rally around and unite the party and tell people to go vote for her, which he, he seems like he doesn't really want to do that, because he's now he has to convince all of the people that she's a, a good person worthy of their vote. Um, I think there's going to be some problems at the DNC as well. And we've already seen Sanders supporters in action at these rallies. And I think it's really planting the seed for the next presidential election on down the road where enough people on both the right and the left can will be able to, to remember all the shenanigans and all the things that happened in this election. So they'll be smarter. They'll be better informed. So when they see the, the tricks coming, maybe they can stave them off a little bit or see them coming, them coming down the road and hopefully react to them in a more proactive way. Absolutely. Rodney in Indiana, thank you so much. And let me, let me kind of weigh in on that too, Leanne, mm -hmm. because he's talking about he's feeling good that you know Trump's potentially going to be our next president. And potentially he is because it was on March 1st that we did an election night uh, show, and that was on Super Tuesday, and that's when we were talking about that the anti-establishment voters have won. We have the numbers. It's just like even tonight. If you add up Trump and Cruz as the anti-establishment faction, which most of the Cruz followers, they are anti-establishment. They're, they're people that are done with the Paul Ryans and John Boehners. They're still within the Cruz camp for whatever reason, but they are anti-establishment. If you add up those numbers tonight, you're talking about 70 to 80% of the elect of the voters tonight are anti-establishment. So we have won. It's just a matter of, okay, are we going to be able to take over the GOP party? A lot of people think that that's a monolithic party that we're unable to take it over. The Republican committee is full of rhinos and all that, and all that's true. But during this convention process that we're doing, during the delegate process that we're doing, a lot of those folks, they're going to go to their state GOP and be on the executive committees. There's going to be some of those folks, we're probably going to get 30, 40, maybe even 50% are going to end up at the Republican National Committee level to where they're going to be writing the rules and, you know, doing the resolutions, et cetera. So the, the infiltration of patriots and liberty mm -hmm. lovers into the GOP party is really on or the into move. a new part, a brand new party. Cause exactly. that, I mean, that's what people need to see. That's what we're always saying is you've got to get in involved at the local level first. That's where you're going to start making all the changes that we need to see. And I think people really are realizing that this time around.
Yeah, and another thing, you also have to support local media and independent media. I'm I'm looking at this. This came in through Twitter. E bombs world Photoshop contest number ninety four. Lying Ted. But guess what? You win by putting your meme in a fifty dollar Amazon gift card. Ooh. Now we've done two meme contests <laughs> this year already. A thousand dollars to the winner on each one. Right. And that's and we're independent. E bombs world. I don't know how big they are. I, yeah. It's that site's been around forever, but. Yeah, they're huge. But, <laughs> you know, we we put out these contests. We've done a $100,000 contest before. Look, we're selling these uh, hats. Make America free again. MAFA. MAFA. Ma Ma I thought Mafa. that was funny. Alex didn't know what MAGA yeah. meant today. Yeah, he's like, what show. is this? Like, it's make America great I know. again. We're all like in the back going, ah. Okay. Well, we but, got about. There, we have those. We have all the great products <laughs> off InfoWars Life. I'm just going to do a quick plug here since we're plugging and that's what supports us going off sharing our videos sharing the links to the videos uh, becoming a prison planet TV member if you're watching this on prison planet TV thank you if you're watching this on YouTube consider becoming a member it's 595 a month you get all the free streams from the shows you get the um, the ebooks the movies every movie Alex has ever put out for free all there you can download them in hd quality we put out our special reports in hd the shows in hd and then the big things infowars live products that have definitely changed my life for the better brain force is amazing silver bullet all this walking around i've been doing and on all these protests and whatnot i developed i'm sorry to say i got athlete's foot on my left <laughs> foot but guess what guess what cured it in three days silver spraying it with silver you now, I'm no doctor. I'm not giving out any medical advice whatsoever, <laughs> but that's what I did to cure my athlete's foot. And I did it in three days with like six applications. And I did, I have a little nose sprayer and I just sprayed it on my foot. Rob, right you, Rob, you need to have your own special section of like Rob Dew's concoctions because you're always giving like these little wizard brews of things that you, oh, you got a sore throat. Here's this little thing. You got tincture. a mole you don't like? Let's get rid of it. <laughs> You know, and that, but a lot of it is the InfoWars Life products that I use. The oregano oil, the X2. Uh, I put that mix out with the silver bullet and a uh, little apple cider vinegar. And I use it to get rid of moles all the time. Not, not that I have a lot of moles, but <laughs> if I have a mole here and there. <laughs> all I, the time. Time. I was going to say, because I don't, I don't so see that's any That's just what I do, though. That's just what I do. But that's what I do. But that, oregano, that oregano oil that we put out is super strong stuff. The X2 is super strong Silver Bullet, Brain Force is amazing. I meet people all the time that are on that use Brain Force daily. I don't use it every day. I use it when I really am down, just I can't get up, can't get moving. Amazing product. So if you're watching this right now, that's how you support us. And another big way is to wear these t-shirts to all the events. Hillary for prison t-shirts. The Trigger last your a, a few events. Yes, exactly. <laughs> if you want to create a triggering environment, you can do it with this shirt. And then have your cell phone ready to get to get the reaction. I got a reaction from some lady at a, at a Wisconsin rally that saw my Hillary for prison pin on my phone and it triggered her and it's got 250,000 views. It's just right there, right there. It says, she well, at, like, first oh, she, at first she thought you guys were going to be the best of friends because she was right. like, oh, the there's a man that, that, that likes thing. Hillary. And then, hey. and then you triggered her. <laughs> my favorite was the three look of all three of them. You guys, see if y'all can pull that video up. Hillary uh, supporter trigger. Well, me and you were at the yeah. airport when we were flying back from, I think, from Denver to Portland. And you had your Trump shirt on and I had my Hillary for prison. Oh, yeah. And the lady jumps up and she goes, how do you two get along? And she thought I said Hillary for president. And I was like, you might want to read a little bit closer on my shirt. She goes, Ugh, you guys are like peas in a pod. <laughs> and, she, you know, and then they wanted to take pictures of it, and they were all happy. I sat next to some people on the plane ride home going back to Dallas. They were like, oh, thank God you guys are out here. I don't know what's up with these kids. These kids are insane. There's our friend right there. Yeah, that's yeah, what I don't want to talk to you. When you get the truth. Yeah. Let me guess the one with the pink scarf and the short hair. <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I figured that one out. <laughs> but, you know, that's this is part of the, we're in this game of life. And we can't let these bullies, these people who don't want free speech to happen, who want to shut you down, we can't let these people win. So get you an InfoWars.com shirt. Get a Hillary for Prison shirt. Get a Trump shirt. Where are these things out there? 
and trigger some people because they need to be put in their place. They need to have, they need to see the idiocy of their outrage because it's right. all very selective because they don't care about gays being killed in Saudi Arabia or women being forced to cover their heads or being stoned. They only care about you uh, wanting three bathrooms or two Using bathroom right choices and women get to go in whatever they want. Well, this men, is going to be on know, Salon it's tomorrow. That idiocy. This is going to be it's, on Salon tomorrow. Rob Dew's racist rant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, triggered. No, they don't care about me. We're all triggered by Rob Dew's racist rant. You get your MAFA hats right there. Yeah. So some little punk skateboarder stole my uh, hat in Portland. And I gave, gave you mine. Someday. I yeah. gave you mine. Get off my lawn. Well, should we go ahead and take one more phone call? Yeah. Oh, let's finish up. Let's get, well, let's try to, let's run, let's run the board on these calls. You know, I think we only got four or five left. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and go with Ben in Florida. You want to talk about possible protests in Cleveland? Yes, thanks uh, for taking my call. I'm going to make this as quick as I possibly can. You know, um, it's obvious at this point that the Republican convention is going to be filled with anti-Trump protesters. My question to you guys is this. I plan on going there. I'm going to be driving from Florida to Ohio to be a part of this convention, to be a part of history. And I want to document it for my website. My question to you is this. How do you keep your cool dealing with these regressive leftist social justice warrior pea brain? I mean, it's got to take the patience of a saint. How do you do it? That's the question for well, Rob Dew. I go to a happy, I go to my safe place. <laughs> well, you gotta, has, you've got to think about this. InfoWars memorabilia on it. You got to you got to think that we're a news organization. If we let yeah. our emotions get the best of us and we lash out and we actually hit somebody, it, it, we, it, we don't look good. You know, they can easily you know take anything we've done positive away from us and it completely demonizes. So you have to bite your tongue. You've got to sit there and hold back because at the end of the day. It's better for you to stay on that higher ground. Let them out, uh, you know, act out. Let them cuss at you. Let them spit at you. Let them push you around. And you get it on camera. And if this they touch you, you sue the hell out of them. Right. right. And this is ammunition, Ben. The more they scream, the worse it's going to be for them. I was listening to, to I, it was a, I think it was a Joe Rogan podcast, and they were talking about these kids. Or maybe it was Billy Corgan. It was Billy Corgan when he was here. And he's like, what's going to happen when their parents see this. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to pull these kids out of school. They're going to get a talking to, because they're going to be like, my kid's doing what? This yeah. is crazy. That's what's going to happen if, if they have good parents. And I, But what happened is they did have good parents. Their parents overprotected them. Their parents did everything for them. These were helicopter parents, and but they had their best interest in heart. But what they did was create little monsters. And now they know, you know what it was? It was, it was last night I was watching Steven Crowder um, some feminist lady, I forget her name, Christina and My Milo from um, Breitbart. They were all at this college just looking at it being yelled at. The whole time they were trying to have a panel and they're being screamed at the entire time by these little juveniles. Yeah. It was in utterly insane. And I can't believe, and they just kept their cool. Steven Crowder did, and he was obviously yeah. having fun yelling at these kids. He gave them a real talking to. He did, but <laughs> that's what you have to do. You have to let them attack you. You have right. to just stand there and go, oh, please. Yes, how like much do you hate me? Like when that girl was flipping me off hmm. and, and screaming and telling me I'm worthless, and I loved it. It was just like, yes, give me more. You don't know what you're doing to yourself right now. Please right, because you know right you're about to upload that video, and exactly. it's going to get hundreds of thousands of views. And so just love it. Just love it, Ben, and allow these people to have their little moment in time because then you're going to upload it to the internet and it will be forever. Exactly. And hopefully that'll be the little dose of reality that they need to snap it's out of it. Info bombs, Ben. Those yeah. are all little info bombs. <laughs> and on, on top of all that, you just have to realize that these are NWO programmed bots that they know not what they do. And so it's got to be exposed. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Just think it's something that's out in the matrix to distract you. It's a definite symptom of how our society has fallen mm. and where we've gone. Because this started back when I was in college. I remember hearing a lot of political correctness stuff, and I was like, huh, what do these people know? They don't know what they're talking about. Well, thank it's you so, sense, so much, Ben. Hopefully, we'll see you out there in Cleveland. Uh, let's hurry up and move along to Rob in New Jersey. Hello, guys. Hey. Thanks for taking the call. I just want to paint a scenario for you. Um, okay, we know that everyone's been saying that the Republican National Committee is rigged. All right, so if we, if we know this, and we know basically that um, Hillary and Ted Cruz and most of the, the candidates are CFR members, but Trump is the outsider. He is, he's not been part of the, of the crew, so to speak. Okay, so let's say Trump gets in there. 
all right, he gets elected, you know the CFR, the Council of Foreign Relations, is going to have one of their agents behind him as the VP. So what happens if he has to allow the CFR to put either Bush or Ted Cruz as VP? What do you guys think about that? Uh, well, I, I, think I don't Ted think it'll Cruz, ever happen. I think if Ted, Ted Cruz doesn't get the nomination, he's a, probably a top pick for Supreme Court justice from what I've been seeing Ugh. a lot of talks. I think that's probably the route that'll go with that. But I, I would see more of a Kasich or something maybe getting picked for Trump. I mean, I don't know. What well, see, that, that's one of the unfortunate things that Trump has not been able to run the table at 60% of the vote starting back in January is he's lost the autonomy to select his own VP right now because basically... To win the nomination, he's got to get that 1237 in Cleveland. Uh, it's very likely that the GOP is going to do everything they can, as we've talked about previously. But he's also in a situation where he's got to, to win the nomination. He's really got to cut a deal right now, potentially with Kasich, potentially with Ted Cruz. Now, this is, this is going to make me very unpopular with the, the, the Trumpians and the Cruisers. But the best way, I think, for Trump to become the nominee and become president is for him to... Cut a deal with Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz says the right things, okay? We know about his Bush legacy. We know about his Goldman Sachs connections. We know about his wife and her connections with the CFR. We know about a lot of this stuff, but he says the right things. He wakes up people. The people that support him are constitutionalists. So, they're, you know, they're going to hold his feet to the fire. Ted Cruz is pretty doggone politically sharp, as we've seen the way he's doing the delegate game behind the scenes. He's kind of like... When, you know, you've got your NFL team, you've got the Cowboys and the Redskins, and one of those players on that other team, man, you just absolutely hate him. And Ted Cruz is that guy. Oh, man, that guy. But you know what? If all of a sudden he came on your team and started really doing a good job for you, he might be all right. And I think Ted Cruz as a VP would guarantee Trump the presidential nomination at the RNC. So I know that's getting a lot of people irritated, but I think there's also a lot of people that see that they're going to walk in there, Trump and Cruz, with their combined delegate vote counts, they're probably going to walk into Cleveland with 1,800 some odd delegates between the two of them. That would make Trump the nominee. And so, mm. you know, we know about the and Canadian And I think he can control Ted Cruz. That's One just thing it. I He's point VP. Out. Just make sure that he lives in Texas and doesn't live in D.C. close to Trump. Exactly. I want to point out, too, that Trump did meet with Richard Haas, who was, I think he's head of the CFR or was head of the CFR. Mm -hmm. And this is stuff we do have to look out for because yeah. that's what they did with Ronald Reagan's cabinet. They loaded up CFR members on there, on there. And so they were able to steer him in ways that wasn't beneficial for America. So right. we have to educate Trump on this stuff, whether he knows it or not. I mean, we need to at least put it out there like, Hey, you need to watch these guys, these CFR guys. They have one goal in mind, and that's a one-world government, and you can't forget that. And we got to remember, though, right. one of Trump's closest advisors is Senator Jeff Sessions, and Jeff Sessions knows the game on CFR. That's true, yeah. Mm. So th you have a lot of good stuff with Trump, and I think our duty as press and citizens out there is to keep educating him on these issues. You know, I don't know if he was into the 28 pages before we started talking about it. I don't know if he was into... Um, you know, the veterans, as we, you know, as we've been talking about it. I mean, he came out with this stuff, but I think we've helped guide a lot of what he's saying now because he, you know, the word is out that he listens to the Alex Jones show. Right. He's a great guy, a good guy. Well, okay, I'm going to, it's 9.02 now, so I'm just going to go ahead, clean out the board. We're going to finish the call. Let's go with Tom in Louisiana. Been holding for quite some time. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, only about an hour, but that's fine. Just to talk to you guys. Um, all right, so somebody, uh, that last caller kind of stole my thunder a little bit, but there's really something I think everyone needs to focus on. What they did to Reagan by implanting Bush, if they do it to Trump, I think they're going to try an assassination attempt or something equally stupid, um, which I think at this point, considering how far it's gone and the amount of support that Trump has, I think everyone's going to see through them either, uh, one, trying to steal it, or two, if they do try to put him in, not giving him a strong VP. Um, I think he really, really should push for a strong Republican vice presidential candidate, somebody who they'll be too afraid of to assassinate or attempt to remove Trump from office. Someone Ron like Paul. Rand Paul. Ron, yeah, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, somebody like that. Somebody that they would be equally as scared of. 
Because if they don't, then he's just going to get in there and they're going to do like they did with, hopefully not with Kennedy, but I mean, they're just I mean, of something equally stupid. Right. Well, and also, too, Trump is such a love him or hate him person that people could, I mean, they've, already, they've got a page up on Facebook that they won't take down about assassinating him. So, you know, they could play it off on some crazy uh, social justice warrior, literally. I mean, I'd love to see somebody like Rand Paul, but only time will tell. Right. I would love that as well. Thank you, Tom, in Louisiana. Let's move along to John in Wisconsin. Yeah, how you doing tonight? Everybody having fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, I got something for Biggs. It seems as though he's a big Hillary fan. And I think we'll have to let Trump know and tell everybody uh, Hillary's true middle name is Bilderberg. <laughs> so it would be Hillary Bilderberg Clinton. I think that would help him a lot. Anyhow, <laughs> I've been watching the ticker on Fox, and uh, Cruz came in third in one state. And Kasich came in second and all the rest. So that should tell you how good Cruz is uh, pounding uh, about uh, getting um, right. Trump out of, out of there is, you know. Yeah, I mean, nobody likes him. And he's, his percentages have just gone down as it, the year has drawn out longer. And Kasich is actually, because he's, you know, just one of the three, he's actually coming in second. Uh, a lot of the time, he's just not really getting any of the delegates, but it's just pretty interesting. He still has less delegates than Marco Rubio. But combined, they aren't even <laughs> coming near Trump's totals. Right, mm -hmm. like nowhere near it, even with joining forces and becoming a super duo. Well, John in Wisconsin, thank you so much. Let's go ahead to our last caller, Steve in Los Angeles. Thank you, Leanne, for uh, uh, taking my phone call. Thank you for all of your guys' work. Uh, you guys are an amazing group. Um, it's blessed to hear your guys' uh, reports and everything else in the mornings, in my drive. You guys are the best. Um, now, one of the questions I have is, or the only question I have is, if Trump wins, becomes president, do you think he is someone who's capable of actually uh, trying to uh, get his administration to prosecute the Bush administration in any way to the, show the world that we are serious to show the new world order that we're serious, that their hold on this country has expired. I mean, do you see something like happen, like happening like that? And do you believe that that is why they are running scared of someone like Trump? I would love to see something like mm. that. I think uh, he Hillary prosecution would probably like be more likely. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bushes, they're very deeply connected. As you can see, the Bush legacy, you had a father, son, they tried to put in another son. Uh, will people let that happen? I, I don't have an answer. For that. That's one of those things that people out there need to just start visualizing for themselves, visualizing Trump doing something like this, taking down the New World Order and, you know, seeing that wholeheartedly because that would be incredible. I mean, what what is happening right now on the political scene is unheard of. I mean, I I pretty much was sold that Hillary Clinton was just in it or her or Bush. And right now, I mean, nobody knows what's happening. We're about to have a hotly contested convention, protests, potential riots, anything could happen right now. But uh, Trump is the only one that dared to uh, utter 9-11 there at the debate and called Bush out on his brother, you know, the towers fell Flying on your brother's watch. And yeah, and, and talking about releasing the 28 pages. He's not going to take this lying down. So I think that's awesome and something that people really should start visualizing because that's what we need to start seeing for our future is the end of this, the new world orders hold on us. Well, and I think if this bill passes where families of, from victims of 9-11 are able to sue Saudi Arabia, you're going to see those Bush connections come out in court. Right. And, and you're going to see how Clinton they protected connects. them and, and flew these guys out and, and worked with them. I mean... You know, Colin Powell was having breakfast with the the head of the Pakistani ISI who wired a hundred thousand dollars to Muhammad Atta on the morning of nine eleven. Mm. That'll all come out, right? I mean, we already know it, and it's already been out there, but it'll come out again. And it seems like that nine eleven is now getting, you know, kind of whisked up in in the batter here that we're that we're living in. It's it's having a little more effect than last time because people are going, yeah, you know what? That is messed up. That is messed up. That Saudi Arabia is a country that we're selling arms to, and yet 
it looks like they're implicitly involved in 9-11. So we definitely, hopefully he'll go after Hillary Clinton first because we can get rid of the Clinton dynasty, which, you know, since Hillary is George Bush's sister-in-law, by de facto, I think we can then go after, start going after the Bushes and, and the things they have done. Right. Absolutely. And guys, when I when it comes to 9-11, I think that it hadn't really been talked about, but I'm pretty darn sure there's going to be Clinton fingerprints on 9-11 as well that really haven't been opened up and discussed. That, that hasn't been opened up yet. And this 28 pages and the Saudi Arabian investigation may lead up the ladder to the Clintons as well as obviously the Bushes. Oh, yeah, because their friendship goes way back as well with the whole legacy. So absolutely, there are going to be some fingerprints. Steve in Los Angeles, thank you so much for calling in. And thank you to everyone who called in tonight. We were it, able to clear the we board. We do have a little bit of Trump here. Why don't we <laughs> pump, pipe him in real quick? He's uh, finishing up his All campaign right. speech. It looks like he's in New York City. Oh. Real quick, distributing the You have a mic that's feeding into it. You have it. One of these microphones here is open. The microphone is Never mind. So it sounds like there's bad audio. Yeah, coming it looks out like they're talking. Foxes. They're getting some bad audio. Everybody there. has bad audio sometimes. <laughs> Well, go ahead and you guys can watch Trump's speech now. We're going to go ahead and call it a night, I guess, here. It is 9, 10, and 5 seconds here in Austin, Texas. And uh, myself and the rest of the crew want to say thank you to everybody out there. And we will see you here again tomorrow. Don't forget to go to InfoWars Life. That's how everything here is supported. <laughs> everybody sitting here, the air conditioning, the lights, the cameras. InfoWarsLife.com, <laughs> PrisonPlanet.tv. You see all this gear in the control room? We put this in uh, <laughs> thanks to you guys. Thanks That's to right. people supporting Citizen Media. We have a new studio. We're working out some minor kinks in right now, and uh, it'll be up, up running soon. And I uh, have a feeling we're going to be running a few more shows pretty soon. I have a feeling there's going to be a David Knight show in the works. Yeah. And maybe some of Liam McAdoo. I don't know. There's some rumblings yeah, around. Yeah, we're, we're talking about some things. And but we still got the nightly news. So thanks to the crew, everybody staying here late, everybody watching, spread the word. Infowars.com forward slash show is this place for all the free streams. Leanne, take it away. Have a great night. We'll see you here again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.